Welcome to My Vaccine is Jesus. Today's discussion is in the response to JW comments, questions, and objections playlist of this YouTube channel and is entitled Episode 3. Before we begin a short prayer, all blessing, honor, glory, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, for now and forever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Pray of the triune God to be filled with the Holy Spirit, so I am empowered to speak truth without error and to interpret Holy Scripture correctly. All truth comes from God, and the errors are my own. I also pray that you, the listener, may likewise be filled with the Holy Spirit, so that any truth I speak or any scripture that I interpret correctly is welcomed into your heart, your mind, and your soul. Now let us begin the discussion. This involves a recent um, comment I got. I'm not going to read the beginning of it, but as you'll see, because I'm going to go through um, all of these verses here in a second, as you can see it involves Romans chapter 2, verses 5 to 11, and then jumping ahead to 16. We're going to go through 5 all the way through 16. As you can see, it relates to the thought that this is going to provide evidence against points I've made, which is that Jesus Christ is always the person who is coming. And that's very important on determining uh, who, who is the Alpha and the Omega in certain verses in Revelation, which proves that Jesus Christ is Jehovah God, just not the Father. So anyway, so there's evidently some evidence against this in Romans chapter 2, 5 through 11 and 16 that we're going to look at. And then the idea of, you know, it's declared, again, in the New World Translation, and you'll see how this is mistranslated, probably purposely, to, again, rob the glory of Jesus. Um, but we'll go through that, and I'll do my best to prove it to you. In Revelation 1, chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 8, Revelation 19, chapter 6. And again, how can I get around all this evidence? Okay, so all of this is evidence against Christ being the one coming and against Christ being also Jehovah God along with his Father. All right, so this is, again, as you can see, as always, in these type of discussions, this is information straight from the Watchtower. This is jw.org, um, uh, Romans chapter 2. We'll read verses 5 through 7 on the left, the Greeks on the right, which we're not going to really look at on, uh, on these slides, but I do have it there for interest. Starting in verse 5. But according to your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath and of the revealing of God's righteous judgment, and he will pay back to each one according to his works. Everlasting life to those who are seeking glory and honor and incorruptibleness by endurance and work that is good. Questions. Does Romans 2, 5 or 7, 5, verses 5 through 7 refer to Jesus Christ or his Father coming? No, there's nothing in there referring to coming whatsoever. Therefore, does Romans chapter 2, 5 through 7 provide any evidence that anyone other than Jesus Christ is the one coming? No, so there's no evidence in these verses. Let's continue. Again, here's 8 through 10. However, for those who are contentious and who disobey the truth but obey unrighteousness, there will be wrath and anger. There will be tribulation and distress on every person who works what is harmful, on the Jew first and also on the Greek. But glory and honor and peace for everyone who works what is good for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Questions. Does Romans chapter 2 verses 8 through 10 refer to Jesus Christ or his Father coming? No. Does Romans chapter 2 verses 8 through 10 provide any evidence that anyone other than Jesus Christ is the one coming? No. So nothing here so far. Let's continue. This is uh, uh, chapter, uh, again, 2, verses now 11 through 13. For there is no partiality with God. For all those who sinned without law will also perish without law, but all those who sinned under law will be judged by law. For the hearers of law are not the ones righteous before God, but the doers of law will be declared righteous. So again, does Romans chapter 2, verses 11 through 13 refer to Jesus Christ as Father coming? No. Does Romans chapter 2, verse 11 through 13 provide any evidence that anyone other than Jesus Christ is the one coming? No, nothing here whatsoever on the subject, yet. Let's continue. Now we're going to see verses 14 through 16, and then we'll be done. For when people of the nations who do not have law do by nature the things of the law, these people, although not having law, are law to themselves. They are the very ones who demonstrate the matter of the law to be written in their hearts, while their conscience is bearing witness with them, and by their own thoughts they are being accused or even excused. This will take place in the day when God, through Jesus Christ, judges the secret things of mankind according to the good news I declare. Again, this is Paul writing to the uh, early church in Rome or the congregation in Rome. Now, pay attention to this. We'll get to it later. Verse 16. This will take place in the day when God, through Jesus Christ, judges the secret things of mankind according to the good news I declare. Questions. Does Romans 2, 14 through 16 refer to Jesus Christ or his Father coming? No. Does Romans chapter 2, 14 through 16 provide evidence that anyone other than Jesus Christ is the one coming? No. As per Romans 2, 16, when will be the day that God judges the secret things of mankind, you know, the sins, through Jesus Christ? 
uncertain sometime in the future. Please remember that. So does anything in Romans chapter 2, verses 5 through 16, we went through all the verses brought up as evidence, provide any evidence that anyone other than Jesus Christ is the one coming? No. So I'm not sure what all of that information is. Hey, it's beautiful to read scripture. There's a lot of biblical truths there, all right, uh, about how to live life and, and what's going to happen, how the just are going to be, the ones who are believers in Christ will not be judged by their sins while the unrighteous will be, and of course will we'll, we'll suffer eternal damnation because of it. But there's nothing in here about coming. Okay, so let's continue. Now let's go into the subject. We brought this up before. I'm going to touch on it. But the big one, which we haven't brought up before, is Revelation 19. Let's look at Revelation chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. We have the Greek on the right, which we will look at here. Okay, verse 7. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, and those who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will beat themselves in Greek because of him. Yes, I am. So he's coming with the clouds. In the Greek, ergete metato nephelon. Okay, he's coming with the clouds. We know who that is. That's Jesus Christ. And if you need more proof that it's Jesus Christ, it's he was the one who was pierced. Those who pierced him, he was pierced, right? Afton exekentisan. Okay, so we know this is Jesus Christ. This is just another thing showing he's the one coming. Coming with the clouds. Okay. Next verse. Next verse. I am the Alpha and the Omega. Eroi mito Alpha keto Omega. All right. If you're just reading this and you're not told what it means... They're mentioning him coming with the clouds. You know it's Jesus Christ. It's most likely going to be Jesus Christ speaking. Not necessarily, of course, right? Um, again, in the English on the uh, left, verse 8, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says Jehovah God. That's what the watchtower put in there. The one who is and who was and who is coming, the Almighty. There's the clue. He's the one coming, o er hominos. Now, here's the, that's Jesus Christ. Please, again, there's no evidence here. Everything in the Bible, in the New Testament refers to Jesus Christ being the one who is coming. That's what we're talking about. Who? Who is a person? Who is not a, a, a reason? So if he's coming in the name of his Father, it's still him who is coming. The one who is coming is Jesus Christ. So it says there, who is coming? That's Jesus Christ. So right there, that destroys Watchtower theology. Who is coming is Jesus Christ. Notice who's speaking. Who's, who is coming? That's the Alpha and the Omega. That's Kyrios o Theos, right? God. That's the O'on, that's the O'Pantocatro, the Almighty, the one who is, etc. Now, they call it Jehovah because they have to call it Jehovah. Because otherwise, if they would translate it in context, right, what would they be saying? Oh, that's Jesus. But then Jesus is saying he's God. Uh-oh, our theology is false. We can't have that. So that's why they put in Jehovah. Now, I've spent some time on this in other um, discussions, so you can go check that out where I, you know, reference the Septuagint and go into the Oon and other things. So I'm going to go to the other verse right now. First, some questions, though. Throughout the entire New Testament, the Gospels, the Epistles, Revelation, who is the one coming? Jesus Christ. In every single instance, yes. Who is coming with the clouds in Revelation 1, verse 7? Jesus Christ. Considering all of this, who must be the one who is coming in Revelation 1, 8? who's also described, however, as the Alpha and the Omega, Lord God, Kyrios Otheos, the one who is, O On, and the Almighty, O Pantocrator. It has to be Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. Now let's, because it gets better. Revelation 19. <clears throat> verse 6, verse 7, Greek on the right. And I heard what sounded like a voice of a great crowd and the sound of many waters, and like the sound of heavy thunders, they said, Preja, Alleluia. Right? Alleluia means praise to God. Alleluia. Because Jehovah our God, the Almighty, has begun to rule as king. Let us rejoice and be overjoyed and give him glory, because the marriage of the Lamb has arrived and his wife has prepared herself. So notice, Kyrios Theos, the Pantocrator, the Almighty, has begun to rule as king, right? Now notice the next verse, it talks about uh, the Lamb, to Arniu. Arniu. Again, you have one verse saying, Kyrios Theos is ruling as king. The next verse talks about the lamb about to get married. You know, don't kings, when they become king, have their queen? I mean, it, you know, again, by context, there is a connection right there to the lamb, who we know is the son of God. Okay? And he's begun to roll. Ibasiluen. Ibasilusen. Okay? Right, but again, they put in, and it's the marriage there, Ogamos. By the way, if you have monogamy, you know, that refers to marriage. Monogamy, one marriage, right? Monogamy. So, Ogamos is the marriage. But again, they put in Jehovah. It just says, Kyrios Okay, questions. 
Does Revelation 19, 6 say that the Lord God, Kyrios Otheos, has begun to rule as king? Sure does. He's begun to rule as king in Revelation chapter 19. Does it also describe him as the Almighty or Pantocrator? It does. You saw it. He can only be either the Father, but there is another option, right? Could be the Son. Now, you don't believe it's the Son, but it could be, right? Right? The next verse, it talks about the Lamb, just like in Revelation 1, the previous verse, it talked about the one coming in the clouds who was pierced. So please just be intellectually honest. It could be. It doesn't say the Father there. It just says, Kyrios Otheos. So which Lord God Almighty, Kyrios Otheos or Pantocrator, is he? That's the question. So the whole point is he has begun to rule as king in Revelation 19. So who is ruling and king in Revelation 19? Let's put all the Bible together. Again, this is all watchtower. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. No Greek. Verses 20 on the, through uh, 23 on the left and verses 24 to 28 on the right. Let's read it and pay attention. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep in death. For since death came through a man... Resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. For just as in Adam all are dying, so also in the Christ all will be made alive. But each one in his own proper order. Christ the firstfruits, afterwards those who belong to the Christ during his presence. Next the end. This is important. Next the end. When he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father. Ooh. So at the end is when he hands over the kingdom to his God as Father. So if he hands over the kingdom, what, is, what, what does that mean? He had it. So he, he has the kingdom and now he gives it to the Father, right? When he has brought to nothing all government and all authority and power. For he must rule as king until God has put all enemies under his feet. So notice, Jesus Christ is ruling as king, right? Until God has put all enemies under his feet. And the last enemy, death, is to be brought to nothing. For God subjected all things under his feet. But when he says that all things must be subjected, it is definite that this does not include the one who subjected all things to him. So, so the idea is the one... So, so the ones who's not, so everything's going to be subject, subjected other than Christ isn't going to be subjected. So it's Christ isn't going to be subjected under the Father. So Christ is going to have everything subjected under him through the will of the Father, right? Including death, and then and only then, after death is destroyed, after death is brought to nothing, then the kingdom's transferred. So notice before death is destroyed, Jesus Christ is king. After death is destroyed, then Jesus Christ gives the kingdom to his Father. But when all things will have been subjected to him, then the Son will also subject himself to the one who subjected all things, that God may be all things to everyone. So, so prior to all things being put under the feet of Christ, including death, Jesus Christ is king. Subsequent to that, Jesus Christ gives the kingdom to his Father, and he will be subjected to the Father. The Father will rule over all. So the Son, forgive me for keep repeating, very important. So the son is the king until everything is put under his feet, including death. Prior to that point, the son's king. After that point, the father's king. Questions? According to 1 Corinthians 15, 24 to 28, when will the son hand the kingdom over to the father? And after that point, the father will rule. When the last enemy, death, is destroyed. So prior to that point, the son will be the one who rules. Yes. Again, prior to that point, the son will be king. Yes. Are you sure? Yes, this is what the Bible teaches. Now, get ready. Revelation chapter 20. By the way, 20 is after 19. Verses 11 through 12 on the right, and 13 and 14 and, and 15 on the left, excuse me, on the left, and 13, 14, 15 on the right. Forgive me if I'm messing that up. On the left. And I saw a great white throne and the one seated on it. From before him the earth and the heaven fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and scrolls, scrolls excuse me, were opened. But another scroll was opened. It is the scroll of life. The dead were judged out of those things written in the scrolls according to their deeds. And the sea gave up the dead in it, verse 13, and, the, and death and the grave gave up the dead in them, and they were judged individually according to their deeds, verse 14. Ooh, ooh. And death and the grave were hurled into the lake of fire. This means the second death, the lake of fire. Furthermore, whoever was not found written in the book of life was hurled into the lake of fire. When is death destroyed? In chapter 20, verse 14. By the way, notice over there at the end of chapter 12, that talks about the dead being judged, right? The dead being judged by things written in the scrolls according to their deeds. 
which harkens back to that uh, Romans we were uh, chapter two we were looking at earlier. So that's when this happens. So notice when this when that happens in Romans chapter two verse sixteen, which is supposedly evidence about coming. It has nothing to do about his coming. It has to do probably with this event right here, which obviously is subsequent to that. Questions: When is death finally destroyed? You saw it in the book of Revelation near the end of chapter twenty. So after chapter twenty, the Son will give the kingdom to the Father. Yes. In fact, the Father speaks for the first time in Revelation in chapter 21, 5 and declares himself also to be the Alpha and the Omega. So I know you don't believe that, but that is true. But that means that prior to the end of chapter 20, the Son will still be ruling. The Son will still be king. Yes. Therefore, which Lord God Almighty, Kyrios Othos or Pantocrator, claimed he was ruling as king in chapter 19, verse 6, the Son. Your theology is false. It's proven to you. I don't know what else to say. There it is. I promised you I would do this, by the way, and you, 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 you sent smiley faces at me. I'm speaking to the one who sent me those messages like, it's impossible. So you need to know the Bible. You need to know truth. You've been misled. Questions. When will the dead be judged through Jesus Christ for the secret things of mankind? Probably the great white throne judgment as alluded to in Romans 2.16. You saw it in Revelation chapter 20. In the book of Revelation, though, when does Jesus Christ come with the clouds? That's Revelation chapter 14. So Romans 2.16, in fact, Romans 2, 5, 5, 5 through 16 has nothing to do with the coming of Jesus Christ. No, not at all. That, your evidence about the coming has nothing even to do with the coming. Thus, Romans chapter 2, verses 5 to 16 is not any evidence regarding the coming of Jesus Christ whatsoever. Not at all. Okay, how can you get around this evidence? What evidence? Romans chapter 2, verses 5 through 11 and 16, and I actually did 5 through 16, have nothing to do with the coming. Actually, as you saw the, the, um, the, the, the uh, bold, bold that you did there about when God through Jesus Christ judged the secret things of mankind, that has to do with Revelation chapter 20 and the comings in chapter 14. And then I showed you Revelation 1.8, but today what I showed you was Revelation 19.6. And there's really no way around it unless you just want to call God a liar and, um, and, you just, and, the, and, the, the, and the demon won't let hold of you. And I pray that... that, that this and other things helped you. And if it doesn't help you, I pray it helps other people who are more open-minded. And my main intent is for my fellow Trinitarian Christians to be strengthened in their belief system and to understand that these heretics and cultists, uh, you know, are, are, are very, very misled and are, are not on the way of truth whatsoever. I pray I spoke truth and interpreted Holy Scripture correctly so that this discussion might have been a blessing to you, the listener. All truth comes from God. Any errors were my own. If it was a blessing to you, I would greatly appreciate it if you could like, comment, share it, subscribe to the channel. Lord willing, we shall meet again. May the Holy Trinity bless us all.